Hey everyone, the name is Eric Dorr and I want to talk about being nice, being funny, being interesting and being smart. You know, I believe these four categories represent how we first look at another person, our first initial stereotype, our snap judgment of another person. Well, if we meet this, a person, talk to them for 10 seconds and then somebody asks, how were they? What were they like? We tend to say, well, either he was nice or he was smart or he was funny or he was interesting. So, these four categories represent our first idea, our first impression of another person. It's truly rooted in stereotype. It's truly re re rooted in something completely superficial. A nice person is, interestingly enough, associated with being less interesting. A funny person is generally associated with being stupid. A, funny, a smart person is associated with being totally boring and having a dry sense of humor. And an interesting person is associated with being rude and unkind and hurtful towards other people. So it's like when you tell another person this, like, oh, he was nice, and they go, uh-huh, so they were boring. And it's like, oh, he was funny. Oh, so he's a stupid guy, okay. And if you go, yeah, he was interesting. And then you go, hmm, is he potentially a bad guy? You know, is he a bad, is, is she a bad girl? You know, it's like, we automatically have these assumptions to these terms. Either you are nice, but totally boring and <laughs> completely uh, nothing is interesting about you. Or you are funny and you're a stupid fuck, you know, you can't uh, think, you can't uh, be serious, and you can't think about things seriously. So, like, these are the four initial stereotypes and we all fall into one of these. We all are boxed into this all the time. People meet you and they get all these impressions about you. Still, I feel like it's important to remind yourself that none of these things actually matter. No, there is no value in just being funny. There is nothing important about just being nice. There is nothing inherently valuable about being intelligent, and there is nothing val val valuable about being interesting. Like, just because you have these qualities doesn't mean other people like you. None of these things, you can say a person is nice, but you can still find them boring, you might still not like them. You can say a person is funny, but you might still not like them. You can say a person is interesting, but you still don't care about them. So, it says nothing about what you like or dislike about a person. It says nothing about what you value in a person. It's just your first impression, you know, when a person is totally rude to you, you might go, well, at least he is uh, interesting. <laughs> it's like you, you have this, uh, like, it's a very neutral impression, it's a very neutral thing to say, like, at least you're honest, like, yeah, it sounds like you have very refreshing honesty, like, yeah, that's, that's how you look at it, and it's like, yeah, um, totally devoid of um, any sense of uh, what we value and what we find important. So what can we say? What like what is actually important? You know, when you look at being nice, a lot of people assume, yeah, but just because I'm nice, people should like me. Because I'm funny, people should like me. Because I'm interesting, people should like me, you know? We assume just because we have these qualities, other people should like us for it, you know? I'm smart, so why don't people like me? <laughs> it's like, we assume we deserve to be liked for these qualities, even though they're completely superficial and completely boring. <sighs> So what is actually important? Well, there is something that is more important than being nice, and that is being kind. Just because you're nice, it doesn't mean you're making the other person feel better. You can be say all these nice things, and you can seem like you're nice to another person, but you're still not making them feel better. You're still not making their life better. You're still not actually doing anything kind for the other person. You're, you're not making them feel... Like, uh, they, they can smile and they can be happy, you're not taking away their worries, you're not making their day any better. You're just being nice. It, being nice has no inherent value, it doesn't do anything. If it does anything, it's by accident. That's the thing, like, I think when we look at these qualities, like, they are... They haven't established anything. Just because you're smart doesn't mean that you've done anything impressive or that you have any cool abilities or that you seem to demonstrate any special qualities. Being smart doesn't mean that you're good at maths or that you're going to be performing well at work or that you're going to be like uh, coming up with great ideas. 
you can be smart you can be completely useless you know that's that's the thing like they are untested qualities all these four represent untested qualities our first judgment of a person we know they're nice but we don't know if they're kind we know they're smart but we don't know if they're skilled enough or good enough we know that they're funny but we don't know if they are actually gonna make us laugh and if they're actually gonna make our life any better or brighten up our lives in any way and we know that they are interesting but we don't know if they have any actual depth beyond that interesting first impression you can find that a person that seems really interesting you get to know them you have a great conversation for 10 minutes but when you get past their routines and what they always say you know it's like it's empty inside it's like there's nothing deep inside there's nothing to learn there's nothing going on inside that head so it's like it's just that you're meeting that you're em you're meeting that empty head you know you're meeting that model of uh, ideal perfection and funniness and uh, personality but you're finding it's just a facade and that's what you find with all these things you talk to a person they seem totally nice but if you're sad or upset or if something goes wrong or if they don't get what they want they turn into monsters they become super rude and toxic and hurtful and they say all crazy things you know and you're like where does it come from that's that's the thing like all of these four qualities are just pure facades um a person seemed very funny and they seemed like they uh, uh, spread a good mood and a good environment around them. But when you meet them and they're actually super gloomy and they're actually like, yeah, it's like uh, they're just sad and upset all the time. And it's like they're not, they're not who they are in the group or when you first met them. So like we, have, we are trained to see these four things, these four qualities, because we're all constantly projecting them to other people and that's the thing like you're projecting these to other people you're being nice because you assume that will make other people like you you're being funny because you assume that will make people like you you're being uh you're being interesting you're trying to be interesting to appeal to other people but then you don't actually then you're actually not interesting you're actually not funny you're actually not like that's not actually who you are like when you look at it on a deeper scale and there's the thing like we're it's it falls under some kind of false marketing and i think that's why people are so negative about it and then you start thinking about like real personality psychology you start looking at about looking at real values what people really care about what really impor is important to another person and you start realizing that there is something objectively funny something objectively nice something that actually is smart something that actually matters you know something that's actually interesting and you learn that like the most important things in life they have to do with like uh, benevolence wanting to do good wanting to actually help the world wanting to actually make the world a better place you know there are people out there that are nice and then there are people out there that actually want to make the world a better place that actually are engaged in nonprofits that are actually helping out their neighbors that are actually baking out baking for other people making things for other people actually trying to make the world a better place like trying to make sh promote fairness or to try to help the people who are suffering or struggling in their community and you see there's a big difference between these two and then you look at um, a person who seems really interesting and then you realize that uh, there are people out there that are creative and they are liberal and free and they are stimulating and they're always doing new things and they're changing and they're growing and they're trying out new things and they're uh, seeming to move at the and march at the beat of their own drum and you start noticing them trying new projects and trying out new things and you find them actually interesting you realize this is what interesting actually is and you start looking at, say, a person that is um, smart and seems to be smart and seems to be intelligent. And then you start looking at people that are actually out there doing intelligent things, you know, actually pursuing some kind of ambition, participating in games, like doing like things at a higher level of ability, demonstrating their skills and using their intelligence. And you start realizing, oh, so this is what being intelligent really is. My point is you have to really get to know a person and you have to really think about what it is you like, what is good to you, what you want, what kind of people you want in your life, you know, 
what do you want them to manifest? How do you want them to be? Like, what interests do you want them to have? Like, what values do you need them to have? What is important to you? You know, you have to look at these things. You have to actually look deeper into yourself and into other people. And you have to look beyond the stereotypes and how they're first portrayed. And you have to actually get to know a person. You can't judge a person just based on their first impression. You have to look beyond their wall when they're being too nice. You can see how they respond if you uh, make a rude joke or you say something uh, <laughs> else. You, if you meet somebody that's smart, you can always test that. You can always see, look behind it like, okay, um, so how do you feel about this subject or that? You know, you can actually get the people to look beyond you can actually you should actually try to get people to look beyond you should get people to look inside themselves and you should be looking inside other people what's actually where is this actually coming from why is this person actually saying this why are they actually doing this and you start realizing that a lot of these things are manifested by security insecurity you know like a person who makes jokes when they first meet new people because they find themselves to be boring and they fear being boring and they fear that other people uh, won't like them otherwise and you go you assume that you start learning that yeah the people we have these latent insecurities we're afraid that we're completely boring and we're doing our best to hide it from other people we're trying to do something to make sure other people don't notice what's bad about us we're trying to make sure people won't notice how we really are and what we really lack and we I think we're so aware of our what we lack and what we don't have you know we're so aware of the things we lack because we're trained to look at that you know school has taught us to focus only on the errors we make and not repeating errors we get the grade and all our errors are marked in red and everything else is more or less ignored we only look at the errors we make we only make at the bad things we do we only look at our mistakes and we learn from our mistakes and we're constantly focused on making sure we don't make mistakes making sure we don't do bad things making sure that uh, the things we have been scolded for as kids and by other people, that other people won't see it. And so we're covering up mistakes. We're not learning from them. We're covering them up and hiding them away. And a good thing to start thinking about now, from now on, is how vulnerable am I when I meet new people? How vulnerable do I make myself? Do I allow myself to actually speak out what my what's going on inside? Do I allow myself to show my interest to other people? Do I share my own project and my own unique thoughts? Do I allow myself to uh, share my values and express what I care about and what's important to me? Do I allow myself to uh, show my skills and to try my hand at something? Do I allow myself to work at new tasks and to like demonstrate my abilities and to try to do well at a task or a game or some kind of thing that everyone else is doing? Do I allow myself to participate? Do I allow myself to put myself out there? Or am I hiding? And you know, what am I hiding from? What is it? Uh, why am I covering this up? And what am I learning from it, from covering it up? Uh, what am I getting from it? You know, there's a difference between covering up a mistake and learning from it. There's a difference between learning from a mistake and focusing on your strengths you know I feel like that's the big redirect we all need to make we need to stop focusing so much on our mistakes and we start need to start looking at what we do right we need to start memorizing what we're doing right and we need to start becoming more aware of it the next time you get an exam you need to start looking at what did I do well at this test and you need to memorize this so the next time you get this test you will do this again and the thing is this is positive re reinforcement. This is called positive reinforcement. Every time you do something good, you should tell yourself you did something good. And you should reinforce that in yourself so that you can grow from it. And we're not. Instead, we're focusing on our mistakes and we're focusing on negative reinforcement. Not making mistakes versus doing the right thing. Not making mistakes versus doing the right thing. People are always so focused on not making mistakes making a b good first impression, you know, and that is why we're so shallow. This focus on the negative, this focus on the mistakes, this focus on our insecurities makes us shallow, it makes us hide, it makes us project things that don't matter, things that nobody care about, things that we all know to be stereotypes, things that we all know to be shallow. So my question to you is, when did you really get to know your friends? What made you really see through their facade? When did they really let go of their facade? 
When did you really let go of your facade? And what happened when you finally showed people who you were and you finally expressed what you were thinking and when you finally said and spoke with your own voice, you know? Share your stories in the comments down below and if you like this video, if you agree with this message, if you want to see positive stereotypes, like this video and subscribe for more videos. Learn more about yourself, your personality and who you are. With me, I'm Eric Thor and I'm a psychology nerd and uh, Thank you all for watching this video.